Scholastic Audio presents The Fairy's Path Book One of Fate The Wink Saga By Ava Corrigan Read by Lauren Irwin and Stephanie Willing It was another beautiful day in Althea in which the mighty specialists trained to defend their magical realms. Trainees sparred on the platform spanning the pond, a large rectangle of water that reflected the grey stone walls, a tree-lined path on one side and a swath of green lawn on the other. Some chump had just got knocked into the water. Riven smirked and swung his sword. After a long summer off, it was cool to have a blade in hand again. Less cool was Sky, Riven's super-annoying best friend in the whole world who was rattling on about the ginger girl from the human world he'd met yesterday. Riven was sure she was crazy. He knew this because crazy was what Sky looked for in a woman. Also uncool, but not unexpected. Sky was beating Riven hollow in their sparring session. You got slow this summer, Sky laughed. Riven bared his teeth. Correction, I got high this summer. There was no real point trying to beat Sky. He was the best. Anyone in Althea could tell you that. Right after they told you Riven was the worst. There was no real point, but Riven kept trying to beat Sky anyway. Hey, nobody ever said Riven was smart. Sky's dad was Andreas of Iraklion, the dead legendary hero, slayer of the burned ones. Sky's dad substitute was specialist Headmaster Silver, their fearless leader with the cold blue eyes and passion for early morning runs. Riven cast a wary look around. He had a problem with authority and his problem was the part where anyone had authority over him. Riven was certain Silver would be along shortly to explain that all the baby first-year specialists should look up to Sky and copy him and be just like him, but never as good. Kill me, Riven thought. I'm off to the woods to get high. He made his way toward the forest, blowing off Sky's protests. As he did, he noted one of the baby specialists watching him go. Don? No, Dane. Riven considered giving the staring guy the finger, but he couldn't be bothered. He passed the blue shimmering barrier and went into the deep, dark woods. He could almost hear Silver's voice now, telling the first years that the barrier was their magical shield against the burned ones. Beware those merciless monsters with their inhuman strength and speed. Never mind that nobody's seen one in 16 years. Woohoo, so scary. Riven was allergic to inspirational speeches. He had just sat down on some mossy rocks when he heard the noise. A deep, low rattle, like bones being dragged across bones. A strange, sharp snapping. It was coming from the trees. The forest looked the same as always. Curving branches heaped with green leaves, dappled sunlight shimmering through. It was a sound that made every nerve ending Riven possessed twinge, chills running under his skin despite the sunlight. He scanned his surroundings and used every bit of training he could remember to stay alert, to be prepared. Nothing could have prepared Riven for the sight that lay beyond the leaves. It was the mangled corpse of an old man. The corpse barely had a head left, the skin of his cheek torn like paper, but what remained of his face told a story of terror and pain beyond imagining. The body had been pulled apart into rags and tatters. In the depths of the deepest, most jagged wounds, Riven glimpsed charred darkness. Riven took one long look at the ruined fragments of what had once been a man. He tried to be a soldier, to be brave. Then he ran, stumbling over tree roots and rushing headlong back through the deep, dark woods toward the barrier and safety. He screamed for Sky, for Silver, for help. 